because sometimes when we think we're helping people, we're not. Because a lot of times, it is the chaos that drives us to the place of success. And in business, if we don't treat people the way they need to be treated as business people, they won't learn the lessons of life that's going to give them success in the future. And welcome back to another wonderful Wednesday evening. We're so glad to have the opportunity of having fellowship with people. And you are important for being here with us as a part of this Congregation Lion of Judah. We're so grateful to have some guests with us, people, one who you know and somebody who you're going to meet. Phil Jackson. Phil, just say hi to the folk. Hi, folks. How are you doing? It's good to be here. And it's always good to have Phil with us. We're so grateful for Phil and his consistency, he and Victoria here in this congregation. And a new friend, Tom Walker. Tom, would you just greet our folk? Good evening, and it's great to be here. Thank you, Tom. We're just looking forward to getting to know Tom. And uh, we had a little bit of fun just talking together about some of the things in the background of where we're from. He actually lives currently in a place that's, what, maybe 50, 10, 15 miles yeah. from where, yeah. where Charlotte and I actually built our first house in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. We literally cleared the land. It was, it was a wooded lot. You know, it was one of those things where you're young, you're ambitious, and you do things that you don't know that you would ever go back and redo those kinds of things, you know. And uh, Charlotte actually lost about 10 pounds, and she went down to about 110 pounds, you know, dragging all this wood off of, off of this lot. But it was there in New Jersey, in Lake of Patcong, and, uh, and, and, and tell us where in New Jersey you're literally living now. I live in a town called Sakasana, which is part of Roxbury Township. And we actually, as a hobby, a kind of, we do buy some properties and then flip them. And one of them is in Hapatkong. Oh my I goodness. haven't even learned how to say the word yet. Hapatkong, Hapatkong. What? Lake Hapatkong. Lake that's Hapatkong. The way, that, that's the way Lake we, Hapatkong. There the, you go. The natives around there said yeah. it, so I just said it that way. So we have a little uh, place that was a rundown house, and we knocked the whole house down, and we're going to build a whole new house there, and then put it on the market. Well, that's great. And this, of course, is the business side of Tom Walker, which you're going to find out a lot about here <laughs> as this program unfolds for us. And so we're going to begin with this scripture that is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 10 in the uh, ESV version of the Bible. And I hope I don't just slip into my King James verbiage about this, but it's so famous and so, so much a part of what we're used to. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then that portion in Romans chapter 11, verse 36, in the, again from the ESV version, it says, For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Amen. And Tom, just, just tell us a little bit about why these portions of scripture are valuable for a framework for this conversation. These uh, passages of obviously are very, uh, very dear to me because they really express the whole purpose of my life. Um, the, the, the Lord's Prayer obviously is, is essential for us to really understand uh, how to pray, the, the principles of prayer, but the real emphasis tonight will be on uh, our heart to bring the kingdom of God and the will of God, which is already uh, being fulfilled in heaven, in the realm of where God rules, and we are here as the church to be the instrument of God, to extend the kingdom of God and the will of God in our sphere of influence. And behind that is the driving force of our lives which should be 11, uh, Romans 11, 36, that we understand that we come from Him, we move in Him, and everything we do is for Him. And when we understand those three phases, yes. of the past, the present, and the future, and it's in Him, through Him, it's from Him, through Him, and to Him, that 
just gives a whole purpose to our lives and that's what I kind of want to be able to express with my life and being here with all of you tonight. Well, we're so grateful that you have been willing to set aside some time to come here and to be with us. And we need this kind of exposure. And part of what I feel like is the design of this evening is to be able to see how God equips people to be able to serve him literally where they are. It's, it's you know, so oftentimes there is this idea that, well, if I'm going to serve God, the way I will serve God is by doing this kind of study, doing these kinds of academic exercises, and, and then moving on into some kind of formal sense of release to, to ministry. But in reality, folks, the kingdom of God is to go with us wherever we are. And actually, Tom, you are moving in this, and I know Phil is moving into a new part of his journey and his own life, as Phil just this past end of summer sold his business that he had worked in for 20 years and had a great deal of success, a, a, a lot of notoriety within the industry that he served. And uh, that was the, really a high-tech kind of a service in biotechnologies. And, and so we know that God used him there, but there's also some wonderful things that God is doing. And he's preparing you wherever you are, and he's using you now, not later, not when you've done X, Y, Z to get sort of uh, educated enough. God uses us in every phase of our journey. Tom, we're just going to ask you to kind of share with us a little bit about what put you on to the journey that you're on now. And I'd like you just to open it up and for the next, you know, 15 minutes, you know, we'll ask questions, but, but have you just, just share your heart. It is... It is pretty a long story, which I'm going to try to make it in <laughs> short because right. it's uh, there was just so many factors. So yeah. um, basically, I'll start off by saying I was born in California. My father uh, just felt the calling of God, and several factors led him to a calling to be a missionary in Brazil. And I was four years old when my father went to Brazil. I'm the youngest of six siblings, and. Uh, we were raised in Brazil, and one of the, the basic uh, vision that my father had that drove us, took us to Brazil, was not only the, uh, the passion that missionaries have of reaching the world and going and helping the underprivileged or the, the people that don't have access to the gospel, uh, but there was a passion in my father for his family. And one of the driving forces that took him to Brazil was that he wanted to give his six children the opportunity of being raised in a place where they could give their lives to make a difference, not just be one more person in a society doing their own thing and building whatever career or family that they have, but there was a real passion of building a family that would be passionate and given and totally sold out for the gospel and for the kingdom of God and doing something that would make a meaning. So that was the really the foundation of my life, my early years being raised in Brazil, learning the language, learning the culture. We didn't go to Brazil as normal missionaries where we would go, come back for furlough or, or whatever. We went to Brazil to stay. We wow. went to Brazil to to basically become Brazilians. Mm -hmm. We went to Brazil to learn the culture, to become uh, a part of the, of the community where we were planted. And I was, I was you know, very uh, immersed into all of that, being the youngest, uh, just really immersed into the community, immersed into everything I was doing, becoming a youth uh, leader and just preaching the gospel and giving my life uh, to the church and to the community and, and doing uh, everything. But um, I always tell this story that, and I still need to be able to dig a little bit further why, but it all, I always remember that they gave me a nickname when I was 10 years old. I was called BTO, which means okay. it would stands for Big Time Operator. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I always had this drive to make everything bigger and on a scale and multiplying and do why do it small if you can do it big and uh, and I did ministry like that and I did everything I did I was I was very intense and that whole trajectory took me through being a youth pastor being uh, a, a senior pastor being uh, planting churches um, doing outreach uh, leading leaders helping pastors, doing network of churches. I became part of an apostolic network of churches in Brazil and uh, in 2000, um, that network of churches asked me to come to the United States to work with the uh, Portuguese speaking immigrants. Uh -huh. And there was a lot of uh, a cultural uh, um, separation and, and uh, especially those who wanted to serve the Lord, they couldn't really relate to the churches or to the culture and um, I forgot to mention but all of us married Brazilians the whole family all oh, wow. six children we, we married Brazilians we had our children all our children in Brazil and so we come to the United States in 2000 back coming back to the United States now I'm married I have three children um, and we just immersed ourselves in, in the work of the Lord and in church ministry, planting churches. We started in Atlanta, then we were here in the New, Ling New England area, Somerville, Peabody, Hyannis. Yeah, that's, I, I wasn't aware of that part of the story, and, yeah. and I was surprised when we just yeah. got to talk a little bit to find out that you're, Framingham. You, know, you were right around the corner from, yes, from and this, this immediate area. Yes, yeah, so we just really worked with, uh, with um, you know, different cultures, but primarily the, the Brazilian uh, community. Now, at that point, did you know Ken and Pam Ebersole, or did so, you know them from down there in Brazil? Yes, or so, how did, so how the was Ebersoles, that so the Ebersoles were very close to our family right from the beginning. So a few years when we were starting the church, we, I, I don't remember the details. I was very young at that time, about nine, 10 years old. But anyway, our family met the Ebersoles. Uh, Pastor Ken's father uh, was very close to, to my parents and was very influential. He was one of the, the ministries that laid hand on the elders in our church in Brazil. There was uh, several, uh, leaders that were working together in Brazil and uh, and Pastor Kenny's father was one of them uh, and then of course uh, we, we we grew up and everything and then we became we, we started working actually with the same apostolic network in Brazil both uh, Kenny and myself but that didn't last very long because Pastor Ken uh, moved back to the United States right. shortly after I had uh, uh, started working with that uh, network well, you know, Ken, so, Ken and Pam are very, very dear to Charlotte and I, and, and some of the people here in Lion of Judah. You, you don't have the privilege of maybe knowing the Ebersoles, but, but I, I know that Phil knows them for a long time because he's a Salem resident, and and uh, and and Ken and Pam, they live well. They they worship in Salem, but they live just across the river there in Beverly, and and we pray every Friday morning in our prayer time together, and it's just a, yeah. a, a they're just deep deep wells of of living waters, you know. It's yes. just a wonderful Absolutely. wonderful uh, sense of the presence of God in their lives. So um, just tell us a little bit about the business dynamic on how you are using business and how God brought you into that phase of what you're doing. So uh, after several years here in, uh, in New England working with the church and the communities here, um, God started to shift my life and uh, there was a certain amount of, I, I, I believe that all of you know what I'm talking about when God wants to do something in your life and you don't really grasp it. And there is a certain resistance. That, that has happened to me a few so times. So God has to use yeah. certain means to kind of get you into the place where he wants you to be because you're not ready to actually take that step yeah. until circumstances kind of force that. Yeah. So uh, when God started to, to, to prepare me for the next phase of my ministry, 
uh, there, a lot of circumstances led me to uh, going to New York with the, uh, with the vision that I was planting the, the, the churches in New York, which I started working with. But once I get to New York, I discover that I need, to, I need something more to be able to make ends meet. The, the, the price of housing and everything where yes. we were and, yeah. and all of that just, you know. And I am the kind of person, going back to that BTO nickname I had, uh, if I have more time on my hands than I'm used to, uh, so going to New York, I'm not now the senior pastor of a church, I'm planting a church, there's not so many things to be doing, I'm always looking for new opportunities. So we were given the opportunity of starting a business in New York City. And I uh, was invited to, uh, why don't you do this? I was, oh, why not? So I started a janitorial business in New York City and BTO. <laughs> why, why, why do it small if you can do it big? Yeah. So we, in the first year, we, we were over 50 accounts, close to 100 accounts, uh, just working crazy, doing the ministry and the church at the same time. Uh, but that really developed uh, real fast into a, into a pretty significant business. But it was a very hard journey because uh, there was no cash flow. We were just working myself and my wife and then we were bringing other people on board. But it was a real tough time that we went through to be able to build the business and at the same time doing the church ministry we were called to do. But you know, you know, it's really interesting because here at Lion of Judah, we have a number of people, and the term that we use is bivocational pastors. That they're pastoring, but, and in recognized positions of leadership and authority. Uh, but, but for instance, uh, one, uh, one of our wonderful pastors, Mick De Silva, is, uh, he's been blessed by being able to rise in the ranks of leadership at Berkeley College of Music to be overseeing all of their buildings and the maintenance. And, and, and the beautiful thing that that does is it gives him influence and being able to bring in employees and be able to provide means for them, which has in turn blessed many people's lives. And there are many people who are here at Lion of Judah who have been able to work with him in that setting because they are craftsmen and they are capable and they just need a place. And so he's been able to uh, provide that. And so we're just seeing how that God does this. And historically, we were talking just a few minutes ago about even like Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul was an apostle, very clearly. He was an intellectual giant. I, I remember um, one of the theologians said to me personally, who was a, you know, a leader up at Gordon-Conwell, he said, he said that a, a person like Paul comes along once in about 400 years. And you can look back you know, at, at brilliant people that have come and, you know, and when they come along in history, they just, they change history. I think Elon Musk actually is one of those people who has changed history or changing history right now. Uh, and, 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 and yet he, he didn't depend on people or, or offerings or, I mean, he did occasionally take offerings, but he took those offerings to bless other churches. He himself found a way to be able to meet his own needs through his own skill set. And, and that was, I'm not saying that's the right model for everybody, I'm not. I don't, I, I, I don't say one size fits all. But the idea that limiting Christian ministry to being able to have the provision come from tithes and offerings is not always the right answer. And so, uh, you know, you're doing this and you're helping other people and you're providing business opportunities for other people. And, and you came a couple of weeks ago to be able to do something and uh, just, just share with our folk just a little bit about what that was about and what God was doing there. So this process of these years where there was a real transition because 
I not only did church ministry and business ministry at the same time, but that there was a lot of other things that were happening, but it, in the end, it took me to almost a, a breakdown because I was so intense oh, on it yeah. where I had to step back. Yeah. But that was what God was trying to do, which I was not really getting it until I got it. Mm -hmm. And so I did step back in 2014 from the church ministry. I asked to be excused from that ministry because I needed to be able to respond to God's calling. And again, I agree with you. This is something that God took me, it's a process he took me through. It doesn't mean that everybody has to go right. through the same process. But I'm saying that because I want to get to what uh, that event was a couple of weeks ago and what it represents, but I need to kind of set this as, sure. a, as, a, as a foundation. Sure. There was a process God wanted me to, wanted to take me through because he had already worked in me as a church minister, as a pastor, as a, as a teacher, as a leader, but I didn't have any idea of what it takes to be a businessman. And so when I stepped back and I went through the process of building my business from scratch, and I'm in my 50s at that time, myself and my wife, we were cleaning bathrooms ourselves. We were vacuuming the offices. We were doing the work ourselves. And I'm asking God why, and I'm not getting the answers. And I'm reading books about the marketplace ministry, and I don't really see that being relevant to what I was going through. Mm -hmm. So after I went through that process, and all this time, of course, we are very, uh, we were always witnessing, we were always praying with people, we were always on the phone helping people and in that sense, and we were uh, going to church and receiving from God, but it was a process of a, a real silent night in the sense of really not understanding what was going on until all of a sudden, God, around 2017, I started to see the answers. And at that time, the business took a whole different dimension. And today, just, as an, just to kind of close the loop on that, today we're in over 20 states. We work with retail, uh, the retail market. We, we, we do everything from janitorial, facility maintenance. We install uh, uh, store fixtures. We do uh, rollouts of hundreds of stores. We have uh, hundreds of people working with us. We have project managers and we do construction. We do full construction, partial fit outs. It's, it's, uh, it's a company that has taken on a dimension that I would never have dreamed of. But throughout that, I started getting the answers of what it is to be a marketplace ministry. And that, those answers birthed what I call, what God led me just this year to start is called Kingdom Enterprise Network. And we call it KEN as an abbreviation. So our event a couple of weeks ago was uh, all about that. It's the third event we did. We did one in Brazil in August. We did a second one in Orlando uh, in September. And the people in, in Orlando were so taken up and, and, uh, and captured by the vision that they pleaded with me to come to New England and do the event, and, and we did it at the Hilton Hotel in Woburn, and that's uh, what the event is about. It's really about, I'm trying, I just really felt a burden from God to be able to help people that are trying to understand how can you be effective for God through your professional life, through your business? How can you make your life in where you are, uh, Pastor Brandt has just mm -hmm. mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. how to be the blessing where you are with the gifts that God has given you, how can that make meaning and in the grand purpose of God, which is expressed in the Lord's Prayer, where we're, we're taught to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May your kingdom come. That's before everything else, before we ask for our daily bread, mm -hmm. before we ask for forgiveness, before we do anything, may your kingdom come. That is, that is the purpose of our life. That is the purpose of our relationship with God. That is the purpose that we are saved, is to be the instrument of God to bring His kingdom and His will. In, on, it says in the prayer, on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. But I translate on earth 
which is a very big term, but let's just bring it to my sphere of influence. So let's pray. May your kingdom come. May your will be done in my sphere of influence, the place that you have planted me, the people that you have, you have given me to influence in the, my job, in my workplace, in my family, in my relationships, my neighbors, where I live, wherever I am taken to be a, an influence. May your kingdom, may I be a tool of your kingdom coming and your will being done in, your sphere, in that sphere of influence. And the one thing that I really want to do with Ken and in the events we do is we want to offer our, our companionship, our relationship, because it is, it can be a lonely walk where you're trying to understand how can you become relevant? Why, if, why where I could be preaching to hundreds of people as a pastor, am I washing bathrooms? Am I vacuuming a carpet? Why? Because God is working in me so that my life becomes a bigger message, a louder message than my words. You know, folks, I just really know that God is in this. And, you know, Tom, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just in my mind thinking of, of what it was for Paul to be set on the backside of the desert for 14 years. Yeah. You know, that is something that, you know, we, we, think, we think so many times about, you know, Paul on Mars Hill and, and, and Paul getting delivered out of the prison. And, and we, we think of all of these kinds of things. But, the, but the, the, the story that sets framework in many of our lives is the seasons when we are doing something that may seem mundane and may seem like extraordinarily ordinary so to speak. It's like, you know, the only thing exceptional about it is that there's nothing exceptional that you can see in it. Exactly. But that's where God frames people's lives. It's how he builds people's lives. It's, it's really not unlike David getting ready for the Goliath conflict by tending sheep. And, you know, this, whatever it is that you're called to do, whatever it is that is the stage that you're in, don't be resistant to it. Enter into it. Keep your perspective on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who we're serving. We're going to go into prayer, as is always our, our pattern to be able to do in this, our prayer meeting. Um, and so I'm going to ask Phil if you would just lead this first section in prayer. And then afterwards, we'll go over to Tom and have him just pray, and then I'll kind of wrap it up. And then we're going to get into a little bit more a discussion between both these guys here who have this business acumen and background. And, and I'm praying that God is going to just loose this conversation into something that's going to really ignite your heart with possibilities, because God's laying a plan for your life, just as he's done with Phil, and just as he's done with Tom, he's doing it for you. Amen. Go ahead, Phil. We're just going to ask you to begin our time of prayer. Yes, Heavenly Father, we thank you that your spirit is here with us. Lord, we thank you also that you have a plan and a purpose for yes. each of our lives. Lord, and you have given people many different skills and abilities and mindsets and perspectives to be able to see and function in the world in such a way that they are able to reach uh, groups of people, uh, uh, populations of people, uh, colleagues that they might never have met had they mm -hmm. not been in business. Mm -hmm. um, it's a different story uh, working for somebody and being under their direction all the time versus having your own business. And what I found in my business, Lord, is, is just that you are moving and working in people's lives uh, where you can, you can put people together that otherwise would not um, be mm -hmm. blended together, mm -hmm. would not meet each other. So Father, we pray that you would guide people as they listen to this uh, conversation, or that you would stir up within people if they have gifts and abilities that they need to dedicate to you uh, to be used for your kingdom purposes. Lord, whether it's carpentry, uh, accounting, whatever it is, Lord, that you would guide and direct people to be connected to your plan and purpose for their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Yes, Father God, we are so humbled to know that we are called and we have been saved and we have been redeemed to be a part of what you are doing. Yes. We are so humbled to think that you cared so much about us because you could do everything without us. But you have included us. You have given us the privilege and the joy and the excitement of being part of this oh, yes. greatest adventure, greatest ongoing yes. project in the universe, which is to establish your kingdom. Mm -hmm. which is to establish your will, to, 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 to be instruments in what you are doing. Father God, my prayer tonight is for each one that is participating with us right now. Mm -hmm. Father God, that you just bring encouragement to each one that is struggling. Bring encouragement to each one that is asking why and, and not, not hearing the answers. Father God, that you just bring a word of strengthening, of encouragement. Weaken the feeble knees and raise up the arms that are lagging, O oh God. Yes. Raise each one up, O oh God, because the best is yet to come. Yes. Yes. Father God, you, what you are doing right now has everything to do with what you are going to do. Mm. And Father God, even though we may not understand what's going to happen next year or even next month, or what you are doing today is preparing us for tomorrow. Yes. What you, are, what you have done in our past yes. has prepared us to be who we are today. And what you are doing today is preparing us for what you want to do in the future, not mm -hmm. only for us, but for our children and for our children's children. Father God, may we be faithful because what you are doing in us today is laying a foundation for the next generation and the generation after that. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But Father God, we are called and what we are doing today is just the beginning of what we're going to be doing all eternity. Yes. This is just the beginning. This is just the rehearsal. Father God, may we be faithful. Father God, may we be, O oh God, in love with you, Father God, that yes. we may not lose yes, that Lord. fire yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. that you, you started within us, O oh God. Yes, it, that God. fire may be rekindled in hearts of those Amen. who are even with us right now and maybe are going to be able to have access to this uh, uh, later, O oh God. That yes. that fire may be kindled, O oh God, because you are doing something so great, O oh God. And it doesn't matter what's going on in the world around us. It doesn't matter what's happening in the in the realm of this earth, because what you are doing in the spiritual places, and you have placed us in Christ. And Father God, we just want to be faithful today. Because if today we hear your voice, and if today we respond to your voice, it's going to open up the windows of revelation for tomorrow. Yes. And for the more revelation and the more. And when we're faithful in the yes. little, you're going to give us the more yes. that you have for us. May you just encourage. Father God, I just pray right now. Just encourage each one right now that is going through a tough time, that is going through moments where we just don't understand why and we don't know how we're going to get to tomorrow. We don't even know how we're going to pay the bills at the end of the month and we mm -hmm. don't even know what's the next step. Father God, you've got it all planned out. You've got it all planned out Thank and you. I just speak encouragement right Amen. now. I just yes. speak that Amen. word of encouragement yes. right now into the Praise heart God. of each one, O oh God, that yes. there's, there's a plan. There's someone behind it. There's a mastermind that is planning all of these things in our lives and preparing us for what you are doing. And we are going to have so much fun. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you that you are causing the hearts of people who have gone through difficult times, and many of us have gone through difficult times, particularly since, you know, 2020 and COVID and all the breakdowns and then all the things with the demonstrations and all the things that are the loose ends all around. Uh, our social fabric seems to be deteriorating in so many ways, but God, you are at work Amen. and you're creating opportunities yes. because Lord, every time Amen. there is 
is a transformation that is happening socially around people's lives. There are needs. And every time there are needs, there are solutions that Hallelujah. you are bringing. Yes. Yes. And you are the yes. carrier of those solutions yes. and you give them to your people. Lord, we're told that we are to listen to your voice, to hear and do your commands. And Father, I pray that you will inspire people. Literally, in fact, as you're praying right now, Amen. let the Jesus. Holy Spirit Amen. inspire you and yes, give Jesus. your heart hope. Yes. hope. Do not yes. think that you're in a place of lack and that that's the end of your story. You may be in a place of lack, but it's not the end of your story. God is going to give you creativity. He is going to show you how to work with his Holy Spirit, even as he did in creation. It says he brooded over the the waters in creation he brought out of this amorphous a place where there was dry land and where there was oceans and there was symmetry and it was it became fertile for all of creation to be able to be released the chaos you're in is an opportunity for god to release his creativity through you and so enter into it Trust him and believe yes. him because yes. he's going to give it to you. He's yes. going to make a way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And Phil, I'm just going to hand it over to you and, and you guys have a discussion as businessmen because I know that God is really wanting men and women in business to be able to prosper and to be able to just experience the blessing of the Lord. Amen. So Tom, it's so good to, to meet you and connect with you. And um, I have so many questions going through my mind. Um, one of the things that I, I really do feel is, is that it's not only God using circumstances to build our, uh, our spiritual capacity for ministry and connecting, but he uses our circumstances to connect us with people. Do you, can you share maybe a story where you, you felt like the, the business opportunities that are, arose for you uh, uh, opened a door to sort of a network of people, a group of people, or, or a particular person that you would not have had access to had you not been involved with uh, you know, a business opportunity? My life is really all about relationships. That is probably one of the, the major uh, motivators of my life is 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 relationships. I really pursue relationships, mm. and I'm always looking for relationships that will further the purpose of God. Uh, one of the main uh, relationships, you know, obviously there's so much to tell, and uh, just pray for me because um, I am not an academic. I am not a very organized person when it comes to PowerPoint presentations or creating speeches or whatever it is. I'm just always, I love to be in the field. I love to be with people. And I love opportunities like this to answer questions. You give me one question and I'll go on and on answering it. But uh, we just pray for me because I have just started uh, writing my first books. I'm actually writing two books right now. One is gonna be the story and the other is going to be the message. And, uh, and that is an initiative that is really sparked by this moment in 2017 when uh, uh, things changed. Now, throughout the whole process of building the business, I have people that are with me way back from those moments where I really went through uh, the hard, uh, long night of the soul, many call it, and there were people that were standing by me, obviously my family, and people that are really working with me, people that uh, I don't like to say it because it's their testimony, it's not mine, but they do say that uh, knowing me changed their life. And uh, it's, it's, it's just knowing that, that God, when he puts us near people that need that, uh, you know, you see how God works in their lives. But in 2017, I met someone and that person today is a partner in the company. He is the, the CFO of the company. He handles all the back office. He came up, you know, he, he, he captured the vision of what God had put in my heart. 
and he created a business plan. And today we call our relationship a covenant, covenant relationship. And uh, so there are different levels of relationship of answering your, your question, the people that God, through the business, not only we meet each other, but we start working with each other. And I'm really, you know, and I know that there's all the different levels of relationship, but I'm really concentrated on those relationships that not only lead people to know the Lord, or maybe they already know the Lord, but they don't know what their calling is, or they aren't really fulfilling the potential of their calling. And I just really believe that there are people that God is using me to inspire. God is using what God is doing with the business to inspire, to motivate, to, to give them the opportunity of a better standard of living because God has blessed us. God has blessed us. I, 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 you know, the way I describe my, my work today is we have as much work as we have the people to do it. Wow. It's, wow. it's, it's during the pandemic, wow. during the pandemic, it was, we exploded during the pandemic because we catered to the need. We catered to the need. Sure. And, 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 and just meeting people and, and, and then building relationships, Phil, building those relationships, yeah. really understanding who it is that God has planted us with. And when I go to the passage in Romans 11:36, for from him and through him and to him, that includes people. Mm. Where we come from, we can never forget the people that God used to represent Him in our lives, to represent God in our lives. The people that put into our lives, that invested into our lives, that God used to bring us to where we are. But now through Him, the people that God wants us to have that are working with us and to recognize that those people aren't just people. They're the hands and, and, and the feet of God. They're the instrument that God plants you with. And as you build them, you don't use people. You, you, God uses us together. And, and so much of the business world is people getting rich by using other people. The capitalist form is just so much of the interest. You, you meet someone and you're all of a sudden wondering what financial gain am I going to have out of this relationship? How is that person going to help me make more money for my business? That is the total wrong way of doing it. And when we talk about doing business God's way, it starts with our relationship with God, understanding that it all belongs to Him. We don't bring God into business. We bring the business into God. You don't have God as your asset in your business. You go to Him for help. You go to Him to bless. You go to Him to help you when you can't do it on your own. No, no. We are God's assets. And when you understand that, then you start to understand that the people are not your assets. The people are God's assets. People don't work for me. They work for God. I am just called to be a coordinator. So, Yes, I meet people, customers, co-workers, people that God bring into my life, people that I may not meet again. I, I sat next to someone in a, in a, in a conference. Uh, 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 it was a, it was a we're, we're starting to open our first uh, urgent care in Pennsylvania, in Allentown, totally different than all the other businesses we're doing. And part of it was going to this conference, this place where you know, you'll get to know a lot of different people and all that. And I'm sitting next to this lady and she's struggling with her children. And God just used me talking about the whole purpose of what I, why I do business and what my goal in life is and how I, I view my children. And I gave my children to belong to God. And, and she's just like, wow, you have no idea what this, this meeting mean, means to me and what it's going to change in my relationship with my children. So that is kind of, a, you know, I know I went all over the place, but <laughs> it just gets me on fire. When we talk about these things, I'm on fire. That's good. That's good. I know one of the challenges that I've experienced is, um, you, you know, there's the, 
the, the pressures of running the business, and then there's, you know, the relationships that the business allows, you know, and, um, and do you have, how do you, um, how do you balance that out so that you're being responsible for the business while you're also being sensitive to, to the, the circumstances of the people, whether it's a coworker or yes. uh, a customer or whatever? How, how, what are some of the things that you do to sort of keep that in balance? So that's a, hmm, I could go on and on. Yeah. Uh, the Maybe number one, one thing was I, I drove my first business basically into the ground because I ran it as a pastor. I'd been a pastor all my life. So when I started my business, I was more worried about my customers and the people who worked for me than I was about the business. And I really, uh, you know, I, I, I just couldn't make ends meet. I was always giving discount to the customer because I was feeling sorry because of what they were going through. I was always uh, paying the people to, to more than what we had agreed on because I felt sorry because of the situation they were going through. And it just really, Doing business with a pastor's heart is is not a good secret to success. You really need to be able to discover how yeah. to. So it's a very, very good question. We have to run the business as a business. We have to, uh, to really understand the principles of business. Yeah. But we've got to understand the heart of God in the business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we try to be better than God. We want to treat people better than God. We want to be the Savior when God has to be the Savior. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we're doing nobody favors by handouts or whatever. I'm not saying we shouldn't. When God moves us, and I'll always be a compassionate person, always will be a generous person because that is who God called us to be. But we have to follow God's leading. Because sometimes when we think we're helping people, we're not. Because a lot of times it is the chaos that drives us to the place of success. And in business, if we don't treat people the way they need to be treated as business people, they won't learn the lessons of life that's going to give them success in the future. So we do have to really walk a fine line where we are compassionate, but we do speak the truth in love. And we do have to act sometimes in a way because we have to protect the business because we are called to be yeah. stewards, right. and as stewards, we have to take, uh, you know, watch the bottom line and be sure that the business is doing what it's meant to be, which is to be a solution. And if we don't run the business in a, in the right way, and that's where the people that God brought to me, and this one person, in specific, that became my CFO, he was the one that helped me transition from being a pastor to becoming a business person, really understanding that, yet I'm, I know that he, he always says that I'm always teaching him how to be more compassionate, how to be yeah. really understanding that. So when you understand those two lines, but the, just finalizing it, there is one thing that I emphasize above everything else in business, in ministry, in everything we do, is that it's the vertical that drives the horizontal, which means it's our relationship with God that drives our relationship with each other. The way I do business has to be the fruit of a relationship with God. If you don't have an intense relationship, if you don't spend time, if you don't stop to listen and to discover that, I've discovered that I've been going two weeks in the wrong direction because I stopped, I didn't stop to listen to my CEO which is God, the Holy Spirit. You know, we have to stop. Mm -hmm. So He will drive that line. Yeah. He will show us when I need to take a stand, when I need to be compassionate, when I need to, to do what I need to do for the business. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's good because uh, it is, even though it's business, it's still a spiritual exercise. It is. And uh, so that's, you know, to me, we had a business for 20 years, and I, we always were learning, but it, you make an interesting point about that the bottom, the, you know, the importance of the bottom line and, and the purpose of the business and, and how that can be used to frame people, to influence people, to, to bring disciplines into their lives. Yes. Um, and that's a really 
great point because sometimes you, people think, well, because you're a Christian, you're going to kind of let them off the hook. Yes. Uh, they won't have to pay that bill or you'll pay them more money, more than you agreed or whatever those things to yes. sort of, uh, and sometimes just that, uh, uh, and I'm, I tend to be a compassionate person too. So sometimes I have this temptation to, to, to be um, more lenient in a situation where God may be saying, no, they, they need this structure in their life. And uh, one of the things I also discovered is in the business and in the relationships in this kind of situation, I, I create a separation. Okay, this is what I'm going to do for you in the business. And because God has put on my heart, this is what I'm going to do for you as a person. I am, I am a physical person. I have a heart and I'm going to help you one time or whatever God leads me to do, this is, is what I feel to do for you. But as a business, it has to follow the guidelines of the business. And you can't try, because you're the owner of the business, you can't run the business with your heart of compassion. You have to run the business with the responsibility of being a steward. If God wants you to, to help someone out from your own personal compassion, it's something that you should follow the leading of the Spirit. But I have really learned the, the, the importance of running the business with responsibility and accountability. Yeah. Amen. That's, that's a good word. That's good. Because that helps everybody. Yes. It helps everybody. And uh, so, how do you, so you're running how many different businesses now? And like, it sounds like you've got a new one that you're doing, How, what are the businesses that you're... you're so, yeah, so our original co uh, company is called Action Cleaning and Building Services. It basically does cleaning. Uh, it also has a, it, it has a general contractor license in New York City and, um, and other uh, uh, places that we have it. Uh, it's basically um, uh, janitorial facility maintenance and, um, and light construction. We also have another company, it's called Action Installations and Maintenance, which is basically a retail, it's called Retail Services. It's basically a one stop for the retail business. We work for Home Depot, Panera Bread, Starbucks, and it's basically uh, working with, you know, uh, moving, changing the configuration of their, of their uh, sales floor or uh, installing new fixtures or even uh, refitting a whole new store or things like that. Uh, it, it does involve a lot of times electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and all of those different uh, trades. And, uh, and then we have the, the construction side, which we also run with those two companies, which uh, we do action total new build outs, uh, re refitting stores, uh, doing a total makeover of a Panera Bread, uh, front of the house, you know, uh, uh, carpet replacement and things like that. We have another company which is called uh, Action Woodworks, which we are now uh, rebranding as uh, uh, Retail Design, Action Retail Design, because it started out as a, at a, as a manufacturing shop for store fixtures for like uh, cabinets and countertops and commercial millwork, but we're now moving into 2023 with a whole new um, line which is going to be using acrylic and aluminum and, and all the different, uh, you know, with CNC's and laser routers and everything, uh, creating uh, designs for the retail business for their dis uh, displays and, and uh, signs and, and uh, you know, logos and things like that. Uh, we also have a, a company which uh, we are just starting, it's called Action Project Management. Uh, and consulting, which is uh, which has just bought the uh, franchise of an urgent care, so uh, but it is also going to be running uh, urgent care, and and there's a lot of other uh, kinds of businesses that we are going to be acting as a project management company. So we kind of uh, work with the with the with the idea, with what it needs to be done, what is need what is needed to get things off the ground and all of that. And then there's, there's smaller um, other uh, kinds of businesses that, that do go on and that are in embryonic stage. Uh, we're going to be working with media, we're going to be working with uh, different other areas that are connected to what we do, logistics and uh, warehousing and, and all of that. Wow. But those are the major uh, uh, lines of business that we're in right now. Yeah, that's exciting.
I mean, this is really exciting. And I'm telling you quite honestly, I, I am very intrigued because there is creativity that is happening right here. Tom, you're just a fountain of these ideas. And I can see that this is something that God has gifted you with. And we're going to just take, as, as we kind of get ready to close the program and our time together, we're going to take another round of prayer. And I'm going to just believe that God is going to somehow connect you. I'm not saying specifically with Tom or with Phil or, or anything like that. You are a resource. You have to understand this. God's put giftings in you. You've got abilities. You may not ne necessarily know how to execute on everything, but you just get around the right type of people. People who have got some skills, some management, some abilities, some visionary capacities to be able to see what you could be. And when you start to get influenced by that, something ignites inside of you. So I'm going to just ask that we begin again, kind of in a closing time of prayer, Tom, if you would pray first, then Phil, and then I'll wrap it up. But we're going to believe that the things that God has already invested in you who are watching right now, that this will begin to unfold and supernatural creativity will take place in your heart. I want you to just latch on in the spirit. You know, God can do this through the media. I mean, yes, it's, it'd be lovely to be able to come to a meeting of, of you know, kingdom, uh, enterprise, uh, networks and be able to be, kind of have an impartation of the Lord to you, but but you can get that impartation even now, right now. As Tom prays and as Phil prays, you just believe and stand with what the Spirit of God is doing because God's design is in you yes. and it's going to come out of you and it's going to manifest through you. And in Him, through him, by him, for him, all of these things are for the glory of God. Tom, just lead yes. us in prayer. Father God, I just, I just want to praise you again Thank for you. being here and to be a part of what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And Father God, I just want to declare that everything we do from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to bed, it has to be for your glory. Yes. It has to be for your glory. But it has to also come from you. And it has to be through you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Father God, I pray for each one now that is with yes. us in prayer. And for those who will hear this at a future time. Father God, may you grant them the understanding that when we give ourselves, surrender ourselves totally to you, yielding our heart, our mind, our bodies to you, not only to be saved from eternal wrath, not only to be saved to be able to have life eternal with you, but to be transformed from someone who's trying to do it on their own to someone who understands that we are vessels of the Holy Spirit of God yes. who works through us to your glory. I just pray right now for creativity for new ideas. Yes, Lord. I pray now for new strength and new encouragement. As I prayed before, I just pray for that right now. Yes. But I pray right now, O oh God, that there will be the sense of perseverance to stick it out through the hard times. Yes. Understanding that we are in you and that you are working in us. And as we are faithful in what you have given us today, we may have these grand ideas but it all started for me by washing bathrooms. Mm. And oh Lord, I thank you for those bathrooms. I thank you for those vacuums. I thank you, oh God, for Windex and everything that I had to use in those days. Because it's faithfulness with that, which gave us the seat at the table that you have called us to be at. And I just pray for each one that is praying right now, that you give them joy in the everyday tasks that they need to go through, that you give them joy knowing that yes. in that process you're going to give them million dollar ideas, million yes. dollar creativity. It might not be million dollars, it might be something else. It might be an idea that's going to reach thousands of people because it's not about money, it's about 
what the sphere of influence that you're going to release us into. I pray that now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, for the glory of God and for the kingdom to be advanced. Amen. Yes, Lord, and we thank you that you know uh, every hair on our head, Lord, and that just means you are so personal, you're so specific about uh, your plan and your call, your purpose for our lives, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I pray that we would be diligent uh, and that we would be uh, almost uh, reckless in pursuing yes, what yes. you have called us to do and what you've gifted yes, us yes. to do. Yeah, that's uh, good. Yes. And Lord, some people have yes, just Father. talents that they don't realize uh, that you've given to them. Uh, and, and they're not uh, fully utilizing them for your kingdom, Lord. And there are others that have uh, talents and they're using them for other purposes, Lord. So I pray that you would bring into alignment uh, people's, not only your plan and purpose, but their own, people's sense of your plan and purpose for their lives. That it would come into alignment and agreement, Lord, that people would be able to take, take those skills, mm. uh, those abilities, mm. even those experiences yes. and, and relationships, uh, connections, relationships, um, that you've established in their lives and bring them together for your purposes. Yes, Lord, we know that you're working in uh, the Kingdom Enterprise Network. Lord, I, I just lift up this conference this weekend that you would bless that, that it would be a really good, uh, uh, fruitful time uh, for ministry and outreach and the things that you're doing uh, uh, through Tom. And I pray for uh, great favor and blessing and that you would bring all the people that are supposed to be there all the people that are supposed to be connected to their businesses, that you would bring them together one by one, or that you would, one after another, bring uh, people into the fold uh, for your kingdom purposes and enterprises, Lord. And we thank you that um, you have sent people to pour into us, Lord. So we thank you for those people that made a difference in our lives. Yes. And I pray that you would yes, show Jesus. us and guide us today yes, Lord. whose lives we need to pour into yes, and make Jesus. a difference in. Yes, Jesus. And we just thank you, Lord, that you're moving and working in power today. Lord, you're bringing a mighty move of your spirit in revival and awakening in our land. Lord, and I pray that you would, uh, you would make it clear to us what our role is to play and that we would have the courage and the strength to play that, uh, to, to do those things that you've called us to do and to play our part. Thank you, Lord. We praise you and thank you. Thank you for this time together, and I pray that you would touch people's hearts and minds even now as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Father, we just thank you that you are actually building courage. Yes, Lord. And Father, the courage to be able to face Goliath came by spending time defending his sheep. Mm -hmm. And so, Lord, we're thankful for every season and every moment yes. and so lord we praise you that you are blessing us as we are entering into this season and yes. this week as we're moving here through this thanksgiving time and moving on into the wonderful time around christmas it's it's hard to believe that it's gotten that it come on as quickly but we know that god you have something that you're going to loose and release for each and every person, in yes, Jesus' name we pray. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 And God bless you. It's been so good to be with you again on one of these wonderful Wednesday evenings. And we trust that the Holy Spirit will lead you to the right individual this next day. This next yes. day can be the day of new beginnings for you. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.